Shalom, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shah, Ka Hala, Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shah, Waha Raka Quidash, double honor to the men who taught me this truth, the apostles and elders of the great millstone. Also, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. Cry now and laugh later. And that's to the hopefully lit, because we are in the state of mourning right now. We're being vexed right now. But we're going to laugh later. And that's due to us receiving the light. Now we understand that Esau Edom is the wicked. America, which is the mystery daughter of Babylon, is our captivity. Okay? And there is no way to be happy while being locked down or being in captivity but due to the light of men which is Yahweh Shai which is that ultimate understanding have shined in our life unlike two thirds of our people they are still in the darkness so they don't understand that Esau Edom is the wicked that the Bible speaks of and Esau Edom is the so called modern day white race beginning with the top tier elites and they reign supreme over us in wickedness they don't understand that why? Because they have been deprived of the light. They are still in darkness, meaning they are ignorant to the fact that this is their captivity. But we having the light shining in our lives, that gives us an increase of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Now the scripture here in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 18 tells us, For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow all right so before we came in this truth all right we may have hated america or hated our lives but once we came into the truth that magnified now we understand why we hate america and why we hate our lives all right because we're awaiting a savior all right and that savior hasn't come yet but he is on the way all right, due to us understanding prophecies. Now we know that a savior is on the way. All right, but in the midst of waiting upon that savior, the scripture tells us, Proverbs 13 and 12, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Let's look up this word deferred. All right, and the Strong's H 4900. And the definition says, to draw, drag, okay? It says, to draw out, okay? To drag out, prolong, okay? So, our hope is being deferred or is being prolonged, okay? So, since we got a clearer understanding of that word deferred, hope deferred or hope prolonged make of the heart sick and when you go into that word heart it goes back to the hebrew word law which means your mind okay so hope deferred make of the heart sick but when the desire cometh it is a tree of life so that's why we're in the state of mourning that's why um we're um full of grief okay and that brings about anger that brings about frustration all right why? Because our hope is being deferred. And that brings about patience. That's where patience come into play, which is the capability to suffer. Our hope is being deferred, but due to us receiving patience and enduring in patience, that gives us the capability to continue to suffer. Why? Because our hope is being deferred. Now, let's go back to the book of Ecclesiastes 1 and 18. It says, For in much wisdom is much grief. All right, and we are gaining much wisdom. So by default, that's going to gain what? Much grief, which is, you know, anger, frustration. And he that increaseth knowledge, okay, and he that increaseth the ability to know, increaseth sorrow, okay? And we are in a sorrowful state. Why? Because our hope is being deferred, okay? Ecclesiastes, in the same chapter, is chapter 1 and verse 14 I have seen all the works that are done under the sun and where is under the sun here upon the planet earth 
All right. And this is the preacher speaking or our King Solomon. OK, it says, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun and behold, behold means see or look. All is vexed, vanity and vexation of spirit. So all the things that we see done in the midst thereof, as the scripture tells us, OK, in uh, Ezekiel 9 and 4, it's vanity and vexation of the spirit. All right, to see all of the abominable acts that Esau allowed to take place here upon the soils of America to the righteous, it's, it's uh, a vexation of the spirit, all right? And we understand that it's vanity, meaning it is empty. It's not going to amount to nothing. It's going to lead to the path of destruction, okay? That's why we're mourning now, but we're going to laugh later, all right? That's why it's a blessing to be in the state of mourning right now. Why? Because we are going to receive eternal joy for being uh, in the spirit of being vexed right now. Ezekiel 9 and 4, And the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, all right, and you first must be a people before you a place. And this is speaking of the elect, all right, of the nation of Israel. And set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. All right? And we are those men, Lord willing. The Most High allowed uh, the exempt from judgment to be placed, which is that mark here in Ezekiel 9 and 4, all right, to be placed in our foreheads. Okay? Why? Because we recognize all the abomination, all of the filthy despicable things that Esau Edom allows to take place in this society that we live in, all right? And due to us uh, being of the righteous, it vexes us, okay? And it, it allows us to sigh and to cry. See that? And a form of that is what? Prophesying against this place. See that? Because we're at the end of Esau Edom's captivity, okay? And we must know that. The book of Lamentation, chapter 4, and verse 21. Lamentation 4 and 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. So, the children of the Edomites, okay, which are the so-called modern-day white race, okay, they should be in a state of rejoicing. Why? Because you're in rulership. It says that dwelleth in the land of Uz, the cup, which is slavery, that cup that we're drinking out of, the cup also shall pass through unto thee. Galatians 6 and 7. All right? Everything that you have planted is going to spring up, and you're going to have to pluck it up. And you, you have planted nothing but wickedness. And that's what's going to sprout up. And Esau, Edom, you're going to have to eat that. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken. And shall make thyself naked. Verse 22, this is the point. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. O daughter of Zion, the Israelites. This is the last go round for us being in captivity. And that's enough to rejoice about. It says, he, which is Esau Edom, will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom, and that's your Hawashai, it is coming. He will discover thy sins, and that's right. That's uh, the beginning stages right now. Due to the Most High, through your Hawashai, putting the Spirit upon his prophets, all right, to reveal the sin that has been put upon sin, okay, pertaining to Esau, Edom. All of the rape, robbery, lies, bloodshed, and murder, that he has committed even unto this day, it's being discovered. It's being uncovered. Okay? But we should be in the state of rejoicing, knowing that our mourning, all right, is almost accomplished. Knowing that our captivity is almost accomplished. All right? And knowing that we're suffering to receive a kingdom. Just like our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, suffered. Okay, to receive uh, glory from the Most High. Romans 8 and 18, 
It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So this state of mourning that we're in, being vexed every day with, with the filthy conversation of the wicked, all right, knowing this is just for a moment, knowing that this is not going to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us, which is uh, receiving everlasting life, to receive those new bodies, all right, to be able to reign with Yahweh Shai, see that to be the governed body of the, of the nation of Israel. The things that we're going through right now cannot be compared unto those things, regardless of what type of suffering. Let's get the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, and verse 13. And it reads, Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful, and it's pertaining unto us. All right, Even when we seem to be having a so-called good time, even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mirth is heaviness. Yeah. Once you leave the body, you know, go about your own path after camp or after we have a meeting with the brothers, after doing a lesson with the brothers, you know, or even after reading or watching a video, all right, something may make you um, laugh or whatever. But even in that laughter, the heart is sorrowful. All right, and the end of that mirth, the, the end of you being around the, the brothers, because it's somewhat of a joyful time, it says, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. All right, you still have to go back to your average life, you know. But the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and Verse 4 tells us, blessed are they that mourn, all right? So we be the ones that mourn right now, all right? So we are the ones that are truly blessed, why? Because we understand that this is about to be over with, and we're going to receive a great reward for us being uh, in a mournful state right now, for us being vexed right now, for us not receiving our constellation now. It says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. All right? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. All right? So that's um, the end goal for us, to inherit rulership upon the planet earth. And only those that have not received their constellation right now have not received the joy of living in this wicked society right now, they're going to what? Be comforted later, which is receiving uh, glorification from Yahweh Wah, Yahweh Shah, all right? To be changed, to receive those new bodies, to get a seat upon the chariots, all right? To be able to live forever in righteousness. That's the joy that we're seeking, okay? And those that are mourning right now, those that sigh and cry right now, those that are in a um, vexation spirit right now, those that are in a mournful spirit right now, your joy is coming, all right? So, Lord willing, I pray that.